Hey guys, my name is Mannequin and welcome back to Mastering EDM with FL Studio. So today is the third video in the series and the first two videos we talked about the channel rack and then the playlist. So just as a quick refresher, channel rack is where we have all our different instruments like the kick drum, clap drum, hat, snare, ride, other kick and stuff like that. And we program in a pattern and then once we're done making that pattern, we drop it into our playlist to kind of lay things out. Now before I get into today's video, I did want to mention uh, someone actually gave a really useful tip. If you go into one of these, you'll notice each one of these is a fill um, so they're all the exact same thing they all link up to the same pattern but what we could do is we could actually click this little spot here and then click make unique and what that'll do is it'll create a different one here notice this is fill and this one's fill too and we could actually change something like this and go um, uh, da, 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 da. there we go so this will kind of sound a little bit different and actually, you know what? We'll use the other kick just to make things more uh, interesting in terms of what we've laid out here. So what'll happen here is you'll notice it changed the notes in this end and they're slightly different. Um, and actually, if we zoom in, I'll show you a quick trick how to do that. You just slide this to zoom in and then you can actually see in a little bit more detail what's going on. And uh, so we have those couple there and then we have a slightly different thing going on over here. So um, it's a little bit hard to see but there is some slight differences, you'll see. Okay, so uh, we have that and we've basically done, um, done created that new pattern there and we could uh, change it up and it won't affect these ones. So that's what we're doing. We're kind of creating a new pattern off of that one uh, without having to like repaint things in. So we could just kind of grab something, whoops, wrong button. Um, and uh, we click up here and just click make unique. And then what'll happen is it'll just create a spe special one just for there that we kind of tweak up and edit just for that section. So that is a cool thing there, uh, just in case you wanna do something like that. I'll just delete that for now. And then I'm gonna click and hold this and it'll duplicate it and then I can put that right there. So uh, without further ado, let's get into today's video. So uh, this is one of the topics, unfortunately, that's very difficult uh, just because it's essentially what we're doing is now that we've created all these different sounds, we've kind of laid it out in a nice pattern. What we have to do is we have to do the nitty gritty dirty work of it. So um, all these different sounds have to go out through our speakers somehow. And um, it's right now you kind of just think right off the bat, well, um, obviously all of them just kind of play at the same time and they got the same speaker. You know, it's nothing too fancy there. That's what we've been doing up till now. Today's video, however, we're going to talk about the mixer. This is the most daunting uh, window of this uh, of this three window group that we have here, and rightly so. It has a lot of different things, and this looks very complex and kind of uh, confusing right off the bat. But you'll learn that each one of these is just simply just like hundreds of these, uh, just kind of lined up. So you only have to really learn one of them, and then you know what all of them do. So. What is the mixer? What does it do? How does it work? How do we use it? Everything like that. Okay. So uh, what we have is each one of these is right now routed to a particular track on the mixer. And I don't think there's an easy way for me to, yeah, just highlight the mixer track. But if I select this, move it forward one and then back one, you'll notice that it's back where it was, but it highlighted the mixer track. It kind of shows us where it was. So. Um, each one of these numbers corresponds to a particular insert here. You'll see insert 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then when we start to rename these, those will go away. So you'll, you can just kind of look up here for reference what the numbers are. And it makes sense. I mean, if we look at the, uh, the, the mm, what's a good one here? Uh, we'll look at the hat. The hat's a very good one because it's very often in our track. So if we look at three, then what's going to happen is this hat is gonna play and whenever it plays, we'll select this so you kind of see whenever it plays, um, it's gonna go through number three here. So if we could just, to prove that, we could just play this back. And you could kind of see whenever the hat's playing, it goes into here. So um, now knowing that, we could do a lot of interesting things here. Right now, we just kind of have things laid out. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So the confusing thing is, where are these ones going? These are the two samples that we created. Um, that Actually, we didn't create the samples. We just loaded them in. But um, these are the two things that we created here, uh, and they're going to nowhere. So uh, how do we know where this one's actually going? Well, if you, it's kind of cool because if you slide this up and down, just kind of you know move it to wherever you want, if you notice, when I slide this back to there, it just goes straight to the master. So 
interestingly, all of these in the end are going to the master. And that's kind of what you'll learn in terms of audio. Everything ends up going out the master bus before it goes through your headphones. If it doesn't go through the master bus, it's not going to go out your headphones. So uh, there are ways to actually set that up. But right now, as it is, you don't really have to worry about that just because um, the way it's kind of laid out uh, right now and the default setup is set up, uh, you, d you don't have to worry about it not going out your headphones because if you set this to nothing or you set it to any one of these, even if you set it to frickin' 900, um, then what'll happen is it'll still go out the master track. So um, that's just the way it's set up, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay, so what are some interesting things we could do with this here? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the uh, the snare and I'm gonna set it to the same one as the clap. So you can kind of see here, oh, uh, there we go, that's what I wanted. If you just double click these, it shows what track it's going into. So uh, what I could do here is I could take this and set it to two. Let me slide this over so we can see one again. Um, and what, what we now have is the clap and the snare are going to the same one. So if I set this to what it was at before, which was, uh, if I could grab this, right? It was at four, and if we watch it, it's going out four, and if I slide it down to two, it's not going out there anymore. It's both of them are going out too. So if I solo this by right clicking it, that's weird. Hmm. I wonder why that's happening. Actually, I'll tell you in a second, but um, you can hear the snare and the clap at the same time. So um, I kind of hinted to that. I was going to talk about this in a second, but uh, now that we've kind of found where these are going, these ones are going to the master, but it doesn't, for some reason, it's not going to, it's going to keep playing our kick no matter what we have on or off here. That's kind of weird. Now what's happening here is it's going straight to the master channel strip. But the problem is the only way to turn off these ones since they're going straight to this is by turning off the master. But what does that do? Well, even if we have, uh, we'll do this here. We have all these on and if I turn off the master, then nothing plays. So we need to set these ones to a new track. Now, obviously we could just drag these to any one here. I could drag this over to 30 and uh, it'd work just fine. It'd go through that one. And this is actually the ride, so it starts over here. But it goes fine, and now you don't have to worry about, you know, when I select something else, the ride doesn't go through anymore. So we need to do this for all these most of the time. Almost always, you're going to want to make sure one of these is routed to a track. So what we'll do is we'll go, well, there's two ways to do this. The first way is just sliding that over like I showed you. But if you don't know, um, you know, you don't know where to put it, and, you know, you're not sure, then just click Assign Free Mixer Track. And what it'll do is it'll find the uh, closest to the first one, it'll find a open mixer track that nothing has any, uh, uh, that nothing is assigned to. There we go. So uh, this one's at four, which kind of makes sense. And then this one's at 30, this one's at two, this one's at three. Whoops, that one was at three. Let's fix that, well, clicked it wrong. Okay, so now that we have everything laid out, I could actually go once again back to two, which is the clap and the snare. And we'll rename this because it only makes sense. Clap, snare. And uh, now I could, what I could do with this is solo it. Now it's only this. So uh, so this is one of the ones where, you know, basically everything's getting routed to a particular track. This one's our kick, uh, kick, and this one's our uh, hat. So you can kind of see up here, if I go to number three, um, rename, this is gonna be our hat. And then this one's also a kick. So you know what? I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear the name on this one, rename, backspace, enter, and I'm gonna move the kick over to where our other kick is. So we kind of group, whoops, uh, so we kind of group like things. So we have both of our kicks going in here, our clap and our snare in here, and our hat here. And then uh, we have our ride at 30, which is probably not a good idea. So we'll move that over from 30 to four. Bingo. So this is gonna be our ride, if I could spell. And um, okay, so now, now that we've done this and we've kind of grouped them together, and we all know where they're going. If we watch this playback, we kind of see how each track, you know, it kind of just shows us a little overview of what's going on in the track. You kind of see what's playing when, how loud it is, and stuff like that. But what are some other things we could do with this? Well, the cool thing is we could change the volumes. That's what all these are for. And uh, so we go through just, you know. But the great thing about this that's different from the other time we are changing volumes is now we're changing volumes to multiple things. So when we we're up here, if you remember, we could change the volume of something by going like this. Uh, but at the same time, I'm going to hit Alt and click this to reset it to default value. Uh, but at the same time, we're only changing one thing at a time. 
But this one, if we have the clap and the snare and we route them, as it's called, to the second uh, the chest, the second insert here, then what we can do is change the volume of both of them at the same time. Cool. So that's one of the things we could do and that's one of the important things that you'll need to remember. This is actually a very important thing uh, later on in your, in your whole process of making a song. This is one of the most important things, just changing the volumes and getting things to balance right. But there are a lot of other things. So um, now finally, the one thing I wanna cover is what other things you could do with all this. So this is where things start to get pretty complicated. So we have, uh, you, you kind of get the idea of where we're routing things, each one of these if you look up here, the tooltip actually uh, conveniently says target mixer track. So we're just kind of sending these all into the mixer. And uh, the mixer is going to let us mix things around and uh, before they get to the output, so we can kind of change up our sound. But we're not just doing volume. There are some other things here, and uh, you don't need to worry about the things on these ones in particular. Mostly, when you click these, you could actually see on the right here, we have slots where we could put effects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually... Um, We'll, we'll do this. So we're gonna set uh, blood overdrive here, set that to 100 times, and I'm gonna turn the post gain down. Don't worry about what I'm doing with this one, I'm just trying to get it so hopefully it doesn't blow out our eardrums. There we go. There we go. That's all I was looking for. Okay, so now we have that sound, and then what we're gonna do with the hat is we're gonna go into the different one. Notice here, when I click this one, you can see the overdrive, but if I go to the different ones, we have a whole different uh, section of slots that we could put effects on it. So it's it's per track. So if you wanna group things together, remember that when you put it, a, an effect on it, it's gonna be everything that's routed to that track. And then what we're gonna do here is go to Effector, and turn off that, and we're just gonna set it to, um, I don't know. There we go. Suddenly our track just got a lot funkier. So um, hopefully this, uh, this kind of gives you an idea of everything that we could do here, but this is where things really start to get complicated. Like I said, right now we're still only working with samples which are just pre-made audio files, but we're gonna get into synthesizers pretty soon here. And, uh, and hopefully this all connects and makes sense to you. We have the channel rack. This is where we make our patterns and uh, where we choose our samples and the different sounds. And then uh, we organize each pattern in our playlist and then when all the sounds finally play back, they go through the mixer so we could tweak them up, add effects, and then they go out the master channel strip and into our ear holes. So uh, that's pretty much the overview of everything you will ever do in FL Studio. There are some other things, but uh, they'll be, you know, they're a little bit less often used and uh, the, they won't take up quite as much of your time. So this is, this is really what you need to nail. Uh, if you haven't, like I said, in every video, if you, uh, you're watching these videos and you haven't gone in to actually try this stuff, I really suggest you do at this point because now you know all three sections here and you can make a whole song. Now, um, unfortunately, you don't know all of these. There's a whole lot of different effects. Some of them are available. Other th others of them are actually locked depending on which version of FL Studio you get. Um, but there is a lot of different options here you can try out and kind of learn. Uh, but like I said, you basically, uh, once you start doing this, you could use this as another method of organization to kind of group things together in a, a particular sound sense. So, you know, you could have your hats, snares, kicks, and rides all organized in this way. So when you play it back, it plays back in a order that you like and a way that you could see. But additionally, the clap and the snare, since we're usually going to have them doing the same thing, it only makes sense to stick them to the same bus so that we could process them together and change the volume together and do a few other things. So anyway, I hope this was helpful and I hope it wasn't too confusing. Uh, once again, if you were kind of confused as to how things lined up, I suggest you watch this video again now that you've kind of got an idea, like an overview, and you've kind of seen what's going on here. If you watch the video one more time and you're kind of confused, it'll make a lot more sense the second time through. You'll see, oh, so that's how it goes through instead of, because your brain has kind of like a half of an idea of going what's going on, and all you need to do is complete that idea. So uh, I keep on trying to start like I'm wrapping this up, but uh, anyway, 
hopefully this was helpful and uh and thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video